Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about front matter versus back matter. To you that might be complete gibberish and you have no idea what I'm talking about. Essentially I'm talking about book publishing and I'm talking about the front matter so that's everything that comes before the actual text of the book and back matter which is everything after the main text of the book. So I've got a few books in front of me, so I'm going to try and sift through some examples as well as put some on the screen. The copyright page, also known as the imprint page, that is looks like this. It's usually at the front of the book before anything else. It essentially tells you who owns the copyright of that book. Usually the author still retains the copyright of it. It tells you who it's been published by, it tells you where it's been printed, it tells you the ISBNs of the book and any other things like that. So that's what I copyright pages. A lot of people I know completely ignore those pages but I work on them a lot in production so I appreciate them a lot. I actually do read them a lot of the time. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the difference between a title page and a half title page. The way I see it, a title page has absolutely everything half title page has half the amount of information. So the title page, like in this one, it has the title, it has the author, and it has the, uh, the publisher. So this one is Penguin Books. The title page, in comparison, this one just has the title. A lot of time it will have the title and the author as well. So essentially the title page has the title, the author, and the publisher, as well as perhaps their colophon as well. Whereas the half title page has half the amount of information, it's just the title and perhaps the author as well. The next one I don't think needs much explanation, but it's the contents page. It will tell you when a, a new chapter starts and what page it's on. It will tell you if there's an introduction, what page it's on. It will tell you if there's an index, what page it's on. It's essentially just a contents page telling you what's coming up. Have you ever seen in a book where it says, for my daughter, for my mum, for Jane Doe? That is called a dedication page. This one, for example, says, for my parents. That is a dedication page. It's self-explanatory is who the book is dedicated to, written from the author. Next up is an epigraph. I don't seem to see these a lot anymore, but this is a quotation typically from another book. Next up is a forward. This is written by someone other than the author, but it provides context in terms of what the book is actually about. Next up is a frontispiece. I again don't see these that much, but that's essentially a full page image at the start of the book. Next up is a list of illustrations. Again, self-explanatory. It's all these illustrations that are in that book and what page they're on, perhaps a description of what they are, etc. Next up is a preface that I always want to read preface and in contrast to a forward, this is written by the author. Next up is the prologue, it's written by the author, sometimes it's written from the character's point of view, it's a fiction book and it essentially sets the scene. So this one for example, Worth, which was kindly gifted to me by Hay House, so thank you so much guys. This has a prologue that's set in Uganda, East Africa, 1967. Usually only sort of a couple of pages long, so that one's one and a half pages long, and then the actual text begins. Then the last two for front matter is specific to drama titles, screenplays, text plays, etc. First of all, you might have a cast page, and that's specific when a screenplay is performed at a theatre, and it outlines who all the cast is, their background perhaps as well, and where they performed previously, and essentially it's who the cast is when you're watching a production. And then finally, you might have a page on all of the theatre information, so it's where the theatre is, their address, it's perhaps what they've put on previously, it's perhaps any praise for that theatre, etc. So back matter, first of all we have acknowledgements, so in this book there for example, it's essentially the author giving thanks to all the people that contributed to the book, that supported them writing the book etc. So you remember we had a foreword before, now we have an afterword. This could be written by the author or someone else. Then we have an appendix, it's essentially images and illustrations and perhaps a little description of what they are. Then you have an author note, some of these things can be in the front matter as well but in the back matter an author note would just be them about the process of their title, any extra thanks, anything like that. Now sometimes there's confusion between a bibliography and references. A bibliography is the resources and what you read but not necessarily cited and then references are from resources that you actually cited in your book. Next up is an errata and that's a note from the publishers to state any errors that are in that edition of the book. Next up we have glossary, a lot of people know what that is but it's essentially a list of key terms and what they mean. A lot of the time this is in non-fiction books, I'm pretty sure they have it in some Shakespeare books as well so perhaps in old English language and what it actually means now in modern English language. And an index has a list of all the key terms, unlike a glossary where a glossary will explain what all those key terms are, an index just tells you what pages that word can be found on. A page that explains more from this author can also be found at the front, it's essentially all the other titles that they've published as well as the one that you're reading. A page with reviews can be from reviewers, magazines, other authors, newspapers, etc. You can have blank pages at the back of the book and that is for printing purposes. Printers usually print in what's called signatures, so perhaps that might be a number that's divisible by eight and it's just essentially the way that the book is folded in order to create that book effect. 
The lot of the time books have to have an extent that is divisible by eight. An extent is the total number of pages of a book, not just the ones that you see written at the bottom, it's all of the front matter and all of the back matter as well. So essentially the reason why you have blank pages at the end of the book, you might have seen them but not realise why they're there, it's just for free to purposes. Then you might have a page that says about the author and it might be a photograph of them, description of what they're doing now, where they're living, etc. And so this is not a complete list, so for example this book has further reading and resources. A book does not necessarily include all of these types of pages, these are just different types of front matter and back matter. Let me know what you learnt down below, if there's any of these that you were confused about, you didn't know the differences between, if there's anything that you need me to elaborate on. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Bye!